They Shook Hands, Year One, Chapter 18, Part 2. You can do it, Tracy, Harry whispered. Don't talk, she said tensely, twitching her wand slightly. Sorry. With one less groan of pain, the troll collapsed with a crash that shook the floor beneath them. Tracy exhaled sharply, leaned back against the doorframe. Well done, Tracy, Draco said. Everyone congratulated her. Thanks, that was very difficult. The club is a lot bigger than a feather. Size doesn't matter, Harry said. You did great. Let's move. When they had moved on and firmly shut the door behind them in the smell-free room beyond, the family took us took a great many breaths of fresh air. The room they were presently in contained not, nothing very frightening at all. There was only one table, only a table with seven differently shaped bottles standing on it in a line. This would be Professor Snape's challenge, Draco said. When they had all moved away from the door, a purple fire burst into light from the doorway, making them jump. In that same instant, a black flame shot up from the doorway leading onward. They were trapped. Definitely Professor Snape's, Drake, Daphne said observably. Definitely Professor Snape's, Daphne observed dryly. Here's a clue, Millie said, picking up a roll of parchment lying next to the bottles. Here's a clue, Millie said, picking up a roll of parchment lying next to the bottles. She read it aloud. Danger lies before you, while safety lies behind. Two of us will help you, whichever you would find. One among us seven will leave you, let you move ahead. Another will transport the drinker back instead. Two among our number hold only little wine. Three, among us, three of us are killers waiting hidden in the line. Two of us who wish to stay here forevermore to help you in choice, we give you these clues for. First, however, slightly the poison tries to hide. You'll always find some metal on the little wine's left side. Second, different are those who stand on either end. But if you move on forward, not, if you would move on onward, onward, neither is your friend. Third, as you see, clearly all are different sides. Neither are different. Neither dwarf nor giant hold death in their insides. Fourth, the second left and the second on the right are twins. You once you taste them, though different at first sight. As she read, Millie's face fell more and more. She was clearly overwhelmed by the puzzle just as Harry was. This, this is tricky business. Run, one wrong move and they'd be dead. Despite the dismay, Daphne was smiling. This is brilliant. I expect no less, Professor Snape, she said admiringly. What do you mean, Drake Raster? It's not magic, she said. Not, ma pro not proper magic at all. It's a logic puzzle. It involves critical thinking. And wizards don't exactly behave logically. Is that what you're saying, Harry asked? She nodded. As pure buzz, you're rather, rather mute to the fact that magic is not, is not completely logical. In fact, more than half of it is rather illogical. This sort of puzzle would, help, would trip up, up most fully trained wizards. And also us, Draco pointed out. Not at all, Daphne scoffed. Use your brain. All the information we use is right is right here on the paper. There are seven bottles, three contain poison, two hold wine, one will let us go, four and the last will let us go back. So which is which, Quail asked. Well, since the poison is always in the wine's left, the first bottle has to be poison, she said. Huh, Draco questioned? Huh, Draco questioned? The parchment says that the bottle on either end are not our friends to move forward. These two here, she pointed, are the same wine. The fourth and fifth bottles here are poison, both on the wine's upside. Note, and the potion to go back is the one on the right. Is in the one on the right. That leaves the small bottle number three to help us go forward. Harry put the bottle was nearly full, but it still wasn't much. I think me and maybe two others. He looked at his friends. He doesn't have to risk a lot to stand, to stand here with him. You don't have to come, he said, giving it one less try. Bollocks, Draco said. Would you leave me here? No. Then I'm not leaving it. Draco looked at the others. Who's coming with us? Quill cleared his throat. You'll need someone clever if there are any more puzzles. So I should go back. Thanks for coming this far, Harry said sincerely. Sure, Harry. Trace, Tracy, Millie, and Daphne looked at each other. You figure out the riddle, Millie said to Daphne. Tracy beat the troll. Millie, M Tracy stepped and stopped short. Oh, Millie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. No, you're right, Millie said heavily. I've been, I've been pretty useless. I couldn't figure out, figure any of these challenges, these challenges out. Why should I be able to? Why should I be able to be in the others? I'll go back as well. Millie, thank you for coming with me. Sorry, Harry. Wished I could see you. Though I could see you through. Which leaves one last choice. You've both been useful, Draco said. That's polite, Daphne said. Well, you have been. How do we decide? Hey, I've got an idea, Goyle said. Let's just drink all the potion to go forward. Then even if someone comes along behind us to get the stone, won't be able to get. They won't be able to get through. Would that even work? Daphne asked. It couldn't be possible. Possibly be that simple. We can't chance it, Harry reasoned. We don't know that someone didn't get past the troll without knocking it out. If the potion reveals itself after we go through, then come on through. Come on through. Otherwise, go back to Theo and Pansy. We'll draw straws. Draco traces briskly. Harry, would you hold them? Tracy drew the short straw. Aw, oh, Daphne said disappoint with disappointment. Good luck, though. Goyle claps Harry's hand in an iron grip. Millie lived him for a long second where she also hugged him. When, da when Daphne's turns came, when Daphne's turn came, she squeezed his ribs, ribs briefly and tousled his hair. Be careful, okay, she said. She looked at him and leaned up and kissed his cheek for luck. Harry looked at Draco and, Tr Draco and Tracy, his final companions of this adventure. He hoped their company wouldn't be further reduced. Thanks, you two. Let's be careful. Always, Draco said. Shall we? Harry took a deep breath and un uncorked the bottle. Here, go here goes nothing, he said, and drank a, a small sip as he could. It was though it was as though ice was flooding his body. This is what Snape had meant about the delicate power of liquids that creep through human beings. He handed the bottle to Draco and stepped forward into the flames. And stepped forward into the flames. Though he braced himself, he could feel nothing. Harry saw nothing but black flames. It was rather like he imagined himself stepping, imagined stepping into a black hole might, into a black hole might feel. Complete, baffling, disoriented darkness engulfed him. There was suddenly no stone floor beneath his feet. He couldn't feel the walls around him. He panicked briefly, but he forced himself to relax. He was just like Professor, just like Professor Snape to throw a nasty trick into his test. 
It was only the magic. Careful, the warm reassurance spread out from his stomach, interacing the icy chill of the potion he had swallowed. He let his body continue on, though he, though he could not feel it. Then he was on the other side, in the last chamber. He looked around, taking in the rich, finished marble. The room didn't look so much assembled as he carved from, from, the very last, from the very rock of the earth. Torches flamed to life, illuminating a great empty room with one very familiar object in it. The mirror arised. Draco stepped through the flames and blinked several times. That was dis distinctly unpleasant, he said. Tell me about it. Is that what I think it is? Draco Dumbledore said it was pretty move being moved somewhere new. This is pretty new. Tracy staggered, staggered into view. Harry caught her before she fell. Steady now. I never want to go through, that, the, go through that again. Where are we? Remember the mirror? that mirror we told you about, o about over Christmas? Is that it? Yes. It shows, it shows the deepest desire of your heart? Yes. I want to have a look. Tracy, we don't have time. It only take a second. I'm curious. No, it's no good to dwell on dreams. She moved around him and stood in front of the mirror. Tracy, don't. We have to, we've got to figure out where the stone is. The stone, she murmured. Of course, where is it? Of course, where is it? Tracy, what are you doing? Show it to me, Mira. Show me the lost for stone. I want it. Tracy stared into the mirror, her hands bent to claws at her side. Claws at her sides. Her face was nearly unrecognizable. The twisted look of greed didn't seem like his friend at all. The twisted look of greed didn't seem, didn't seem like his friend at all. Petrificus Totalis, stupefied. Drake, Drake and Tracy fell to the floor as dress of light struck them. Harry went around with his blonde and pointed... One point they received a shock. It was Professor Quarrel. You, Harry said with loathing. Quarrel smiled at him. It was an evil smile, and the man wasn't twitching at all. Something was definitely wrong here. Me, he said evenly. I wondered whether I'd be meeting you here, Potter. I knew it was you, Harry said with an edge in his voice. You always were clever, Potter, Quarrel laughing at him. It was not his normal high pitched, nervous, tremble, trouble laughed or laugh either, but it was cold and sharp. You were in the top marks I gave you in defense. Harry noted that remark with cool pleasure, but he didn't let, didn't let himself be, be distracted. You're behind, you're behind all the strange things this year, haven't you? He said, I have. It's probably the best plans you managed to survive. You have the, you have the most damnable luck, Potter. Quarrel's voice grew stony. Face grew stony. But it ends tonight. He snapped his fingers. Ropes sprang, sprang, sprang out of thin air and wrapped himself tight, tightly around Harry, pinning his arms to his sides. His ankles snapped together like likewise bound. Harry, Harry wavered and nearly fell, fighting back a foul word he learned from Theo. He hadn't been fast enough and he dropped his wand. Quarrel's face grew stony, but it ends tonight. He snapped his fingers. Ropes sprang out of thin air and wrapped themselves tightly around Harry, pinning his arms to his sides. His ankles snapped together, likewise bound. Harry wavered and nearly fell, fighting back a foul word he learned from Theo. He had been fast enough, and, and he dropped his wand. You know it's hardly too much to be allowed to live, Potter. I shall dispose of you in a moment. Be silent while I examine this mirror. Harry stayed quiet as Quarrel turned his back. This mirror is the key to finding the stone, he murmured, tapping his, his foot impatiently. Trust Dumbledore to, come up, Dumbledore to come up with something ingenious. He is in London, but he'll be back, but he'll be back soon. Too late, too late. Harry strained as reaches wand. If he could touch it touches to the ropes, he ought to be able to break them. There, he felt the ropes around his arms loosen. I see the stone, Quarrel said, uh, staring hungrily to the mirror. I'm I'm, I am presenting it to my master. His lips twisted in an angry snarl. But how do I get it? Harry bent down and touched his wand to the rope around his ankles, which sprang loose immediately. What in the world is he going to do? Master, I don't expect... I don't know what to do. Quarrel... Uh, what in the world is he going to do? Master, I don't know what to do, Quarrel was muttering. I don't understand. Should I break the mirror as a stone inside? Master, help me. Strange as it might seem, Quirrell might appear to be expecting an answer. Is, is your master here? Harry couldn't help but ask. Quirrell stopped pacing. He is here, the wizard said quietly. A spasm of fear flit, flitted across his face, reflecting the mirror. He is with me wh wherever I go. I met him when I traveled the world. I was a foolish young man then, full of ridiculous ideas about good and evil. Lord Voldemort showed me how wrong I was. There was no I was. There was no good and, there was no good and evil, but only power, and those too weak to see it. Since I have served him faithfully, although I've disappointed him many, many times, Quirrell shouted, I do, he does not, does not tolerate failure lightly. When I failed to steal the stone from Gringotts, he was most displeased. My punishment was that he would keep a closer watch upon me. Harry's mind was lashing back to the day in Diagon Alley he had seen Quirrell that day. He had even shaken hands with him in the Legion Cauldron. Master, I cannot solve this puzzle. I need your help. To Harry's sudden horror, a voice answered, but the voice seemed to come from Quirrell himself. Use the boy. Use the boy. It was a low, dry voice, just like, just like a snake, snake's hiss. Just like a snake's hiss. Harry couldn't imagine what a human throat could, what human throat could make such a tone. Quirrell rounded on Potter. Come here, boy. Harry reached to, to raise his wand. If he could cast some spells and capacitate Quirrell, then he could find the stone. Luck must tone he thought. No, that wasn't right. Head his head was throbbing. He couldn't think of any suitable spell. He stumbled towards the mirror. How does this final trick work? The mirror has to be the key. Just whatever you desire most deeply in your heart. Okay, what do I want more than anything in the world, anything else in the world at this moment is to find the stone before Quirrell does? But look in the mirror now. He could, I should see myself finding it. I can see where it was hidden. I'll just lie to him and make something up. Quirrell stood behind him, watching him like an avenging hawk. Harry got on the, on the funny smell that seemed to come from Quirrell's turban. He cleared his mind of all but his desire to leave, keep the stone away from Quirrell. He saw his reflection, pale and scared looking at first. A moment later, though, his reflection grinned at him. The mirror Harry reached into his hand into his pocket and spoke, pulled out a little blood red rock. He winked, winked and slipped the stone back into his pocket, and he, as, as he did so, Harry felt something heavy dropped in his, into his real pocket. He suppressed a gasp. Somehow, incredibly, he'd gone the philosopher's stone. What do you see, boy? Quarrel demanded impatiently. Harry's mind was reeling. 
incredibly brief, pulling pulling all of his very real Sashman to the word. Silverman has, Silverman has won the House Cup. That's not incredible, of course. But we've won the Quidditch Cup, too. No, that's not incredible either, but I'm captain of the team. Quirrell cursed at him. Step aside, you useless boy. He growled, shoving Harry out of the way. Harry stepped back, wondering if he dared to make a break for it. He could leave Quirrell down here struggling with the mirror for hours. So it was heavy against his leg. Before he had taken two steps, a strange voice spoke again. He lies. He lies. Potter, Quirrell shouted. Come back here. Tell me the truth. What did you see? Harry ran for the door, just, thought he was, just as he thought he was going to make it. The scorching flames roared up in the doorway. He fell back, cringing away from the heat. The voice spoke again. Let me speak to him face to face. Quirrell Solon's voice became soul. Master, you're not strong enough. I have strength enough for this. Harry felt the devil as, de as, as a devil sneer was rooting him to the spot. He couldn't move a muscle. Everybody watched as Quirrell reached up and began to unwrap his turban. What was going on? The purple cult fell away, revealing Quirrell's bare head, which looked strangely small now. The Quirrell tore the turned around. Harry would have screamed, but he couldn't make a sound. Where there, where, where there should have been a back on the, the back of Quirrell's head, there was a face, the most terrible face Harry had ever seen. It was chalk white with glaring red eyes and slits with nostrils like a snake. It was a horrible face, one that Harry had seen in his nightmares. Harry parted lips, lips his voice, mouth whispered. Lips his mouth whispered. Harry was trapped, pimping the wall of flame in his own terror. His scar was on fire. He felt, it felt like he would spill open and spill his brains out. He had to fight back the urge to vomit. See what I have become, the face said. Mere shadow and vapor. That is all I am. I have form only when I can share the body of another. Unicorn blood can strengthen me, as you saw in the forest. But Leakster of Life can restore my powers, and I will create a new body for myself. I grow tired of waiting, Harry Potter, so why not give me the stone? Master, he does not have the stone, Quirrell protested. Oh, yes, Voldemort hissed. He has the stone. Ask him. Ask him what he has in his pocket. So he knew. Harry weighs his wand, determined to make a good accounting of himself. Don't be a fool, boy, snarled Voldemort. Save your own life. Give me the stone and join me. No, Harry shouted. Join me, join me or meet the same fate as your parents. They died begging me for mercy. Liar, Harry screamed. Quirrell was backing to wa walking backwards at him so Voldemort could see Harry. The evil face is still smiling at him, chilling Harry to the core. How brave it has to always admire bravery. Your parents are very brave, yes. Your father died first, but he challenged me to, like a fool. We have a courageous fight, the same as your mother. She died for you. Give me the stone or you shall have died in vain. Never. Harry didn't know what spell he cast, but a jet of blue light was divided away by some sort of shield. Sighs and Voldemort screamed. Cor rolled around and clapped, and clapped his hand down on Harry's wrist. All at once, at once, pain seared across Harry's scar. as felt those as we were splitting in two again. Harry yelled, strong with all his might. With all of his might, and to his surprise, Quirrell let go of him. The pain in his head lessened. He looked around to see widely see where Quirrell had gone. It saw him hunched to pain, looking at his fingers, which were blistering before his eyes. The burning Quirrell cried, Seize him, Voldemort shrieked, shrieked again. Quirrell dove with Harry landing on top of him. He wrapped his hands around Harry's throat. The pain from Harry's scar was merely blinding him, yet he could see and hear Quirrell howling in agony. Master, I cannot touch him. It burns me so. And Quirrell, pin throw pinning Harry to the floor with his knees, let go of his neck and stared, bewildered, as his hands at his hands as he blistered and smoked. Harry could see the flesh look burned and raw. Then kill him, shrieked Voldemort. Kill him and take the stone. Quirrell raised his hands to perform his deadly magic, but Harry lunged up and clapped his own clapped his own hands to Quirrell's face. Arg! Quirrell scrambled to get away from him, but his face blistering just like his just like his hands. Then Harry figured it out. Quirrell couldn't bear the touch of his bare skin. Harry, you could use that again, use that against him. Harry managed to get his feet under him and sprang at Quirrell, falling on top of him down on top of him down to the floor. He had to keep the dark wizard enough paint so that, so that he couldn't cast deadly deadly spell. He grabbed Quirrell's face. Quirrell was screaming in agony. Voldemort was screeching for Quirrell to kill Harry. Harry was nearly going mad from the pain in the scar. He helped himself backing out and latched, and latched onto the coral as hard as he could. Nevertheless, unless he was slipping down to blackness. Down, down, down. Okay, so that's chapter 18 of Daisha Cans Year 1. Take care, everybody. I'll leave you for my storytime channel.